Greetings folks, here we're going to look at another mouthpiece. Um, this is another custom piece of restoration. Um, this is a Hollywood Dukoff. Um, the better model as far as I'm concerned that it's constructed in two halves, brazed or soldered together. Um, large round chamber, uh, round inner sidewalls. Um, people say that this is kind of, including myself, that it's kind of like a has a tone master, auto link tone master type of sound uh, with a little more projection and a little more focus. Um, I think this is fairly accurate. I mean, they have their own feeling, of course, but it has it's a little bit similar to that. Um, and this is uh, one of the. Uh, it can also be identified the two halves model because the serial number starts with B. Um, they sometimes start with B. They sometimes start with V, as in Victor. Um, and then there's a sort of a similar model that uh, has a serial number that starts with with X which they're a little bit different but they're also two halves um, and, and with the round chamber. Um, the other ones uh, that are like a single piece uh, model are, are uh, they, they are um, serial numbers start with uh, D, K, uh, uh, D or K or no or no letter at all and just numbers. Uh, in any case um, this piece uh, was originally uh, stamped four star on the side and I've done a bunch of restoration work and I've got it to about a what is it a 90 tip I believe yeah it's a 90 so it's about a six um, it's got quite a high baffle so it's there's plenty of brightness to it um, and it's got that big chamber and it is a bit focused it's a uh, it, it's a uh, yeah it's more focused than a tone master um, plenty more focused than a tone master and brighter than they usually are um, anyway, it has its own feeling, and let's uh, let's hear how it sounds on a 1956 Mark VI. And uh, this is this is actually only a like a two and a half uh, Rigotti reed. That's what I usually play. Um, but uh, you know, different reeds may have a different feeling for different people. But this is kind of this is kind of where I'm at. It plays just fine with that. You might go a little bit harder, you know, on a six. Sort of depends on your st on your style, but uh, I generally find uh, if I have a good read, it kind of doesn't matter what strength it is or what size the mouthpiece is. I can get a good sense of the piece just based on the fact that I know the read is good, which is a rarity in itself. So let me uh, let me uh, get the sound together here. All right, we'll give it a shot.
right, I think that does the deed pretty good. Uh, 90 facing uh, Bob Dukoff Hollywood. Um, it's a nice piece. It's a lot of fun. It's got a nice bit of focus. This is probably a... Uh, speculation but you know these were sort of made popular because Dexter Gordon played on one with his Con 10M and I'll tell you they go they do go well on a large bore type of horn um, this particular uh, uh, Mark 6 this particular one is a fairly spread type of sound uh, you know Selmers are kind of known for their focus this horn is pretty well spread it, it, it reminded you know it's a very similar in a certain way to a con uh, 30m that i played um so it's a little bit on the spread side um and some of the recordings i made when i was younger uh you know still not that old but not dead yet either um i did on a, on a hollywood dukoff on this horn um, because it goes well um it 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 has a good relationship with sort of more spread horns because the Hollywood Dukoff is kind of a more focused mouthpiece, so it brings everything into line. Um, links in some way don't always go quite as well on this horn, for example. So, so that's kind of the the angle of the Hollywood Dukoff, this model anyway. Um, as you can see, the sound it still has that that round chamber, that large chamber sound, uh, but it's just uh, it brings things a little bit more into line. Anyway, um, that should do it. Oops, the sound was low. I hope you can hear me. Well, have a nice day.